Hello, I'm Rose Levy Berenbaum. I'm here in the Betty Crocker kitchens and on behalf of Gold Medal Flour to share some wonderful baking tips with you. I absolutely adore walnuts, not only for their flavor in a cake, but also for how beautiful and crunchy they are on the outside of the cake to decorate buttercream. Walnuts are very high in oil though, and so they are prone to rancidity. If you've ever tasted a rancid walnut, you'll know that it just is inedible and ruins the entire whatever you're putting it into or onto. So the way to know for sure is by tasting a walnut, because if there's one rancid one in the batch, they'll all be bad. Now the other thing to know about walnuts is that, and all nuts for that matter, is that toasting them lightly brings out the flavor. I like to toast them at 325 Fahrenheit for about seven minutes, watching them carefully. They should just deepen slightly in color. If they start getting dark brown, they'll bring out a bitterness. What I do is when they're, as soon as they're toasted, I empty them to stop the cooking into a paper towel, not a paper towel, a cloth towel. It can be paper, but cloth holds up better. Because what I like to do is to roll them and crunch them. While they're still hot, the skins will come off. Now you don't have to take off all the skins, but I like to take off as much as will come off easily because the skins are bitter and it gives them more delicious taste. Now this is an extra refinement that really doesn't have to be done and normally when I break them by hand, you can see the skin starts coming off by itself. Now I, if I'm not using too many walnuts, I prefer breaking them by hand and I can e either use a little knife or just my nail to scrape off the skin. But if I'm in a rush, I'll use a chef's knife to cut it. I like to break it by hand, especially if they're just a few. It doesn't take very long, or if I'm talking on the phone. This is usually when I call my father. Hi, Dad, I'm cracking walnuts. I'm cutting them up, so I thought maybe we'd have time for a 20-minute conversation. <laughs> but when I'm really pressed, as I said, what I'll do is, after removing as many of the skins that I can, and you can see all these skins on the towel, I'll empty them. Oops. <laughs> I'll empty them onto a butcher block or a cutting board and I'll use the chef knife. And the reason I don't like this as much is because you get a lot of nut dust this way. Doing it by hand you can control the exact size and if you're putting it into a cake batter it doesn't matter, especially if you're grinding it up in a food processor. But if you're putting it on the outside of the cake it looks much more attractive as you can see in this bowl where the nuts are pretty even. But just assuming that this is as fine as I wanted them to be, I'll dust out all what we call the nut powder or flour. And you can use this to add to a batter, it's delicious. But if you use it to put on the side of the cake, it's not nearly as attractive. You wonder in pictures how they always look so perfect, this is how they do it. They sift out all the coarse, the, the fine parts that pass through a sieve. And I like to use a really coarse sieve or colander to get all the particles out, not just the dust, so that I end up with pieces that look as good as this. I like to use a large bowl to hold the cake over. That's the easiest way to get them on the sides. And it's much simpler than people would ever imagine. They always say, how do you get the nuts so nicely on the side? I use the little offset spatula to lift up the cake that's sitting on a cardboard round so I can hold it. And it doesn't really matter if you've done the sides evenly or not, because with the nuts, it's going to hide every imperfection, another good reason to use them. Let's see, I'm holding it over the bowl and just pressing them in. And if the buttercream is cold, it won't hold. So the buttercream needs to be either at room temperature or you can wave a hairdryer set on low over the sides, not to melt it, but just to soften it so that they hold the sides, that the nuts really cling well to the sides. Doesn't that look great? And plus, not only is it delicious, but you have the creamy buttercream, the soft cake, and the crunchy walnuts. And those are the three things you're always looking for in a dessert. I love baking with almonds because they not only give a wonderful flavor to cakes, but they also give a really interesting, lovely texture. But there are different types of almonds to purchase, and there's often a lot of confusion as to which the recipe writer meant for you to use. These are whole, unblanched almonds with the peel still on. And these are the same almonds that are called blanched, which means that the peel is no longer on them. These are slivered blanched almonds, and they're more coarse than the sliced. These are the sliced blanched almonds, and these are the sliced unblanched almonds. 
And these are my preference because not only does it give a slight flavor having the skin on, but it also gives a slightly deeper color. But you can use them interchangeably, and this is my preference also because when you grind them in a food processor, they turn to powder rather than to paste. If you were to start with a half a cup of these almonds, or in any given amount, and you put it in a food processor, it very easily turns into a pasty, oily mixture. And even the slivered almonds are not quite as easy to grind up. And my secret is that I use a little bit of sugar to grind it with, or a little flour with any of these, and you get a more powdery quality. But another important thing is that sliced, slivered, and whole weigh different amounts if you use the same measure. So you will see that a half a cup of the sliced almonds is going to weigh differently from, say, the whole almonds. The first thing you do is you put it on the scale and tear out the weight. And this is the My Way scale, which is my favorite scale, because not only is it super accurate, but it also is really affordable, and it switches easily between grams and ounces. So I've teared out the weight of this cup, or well, this is half a cup, actually. And here's why I really prefer weighing to measuring in the first place, because a half a cup of anything that's ground up or sliced or, or whole it's hard to determine exactly where it's level. Is it slightly domed? Is it slightly concave? Missing a few almonds, but it's not that serious. <coughs> okay, now this is the half cup of the sliced, and it's 42, 43 grams. Now you'll see what the whole weighs and how different. And because these are whole, it's even harder to get them level. In fact, it's probably impossible. All right, we'll be more fair. <coughs> See, this is 74 grams or 72 grams, so it's just completely a different weight. And that's why if you don't choose the right nut or the nut that the author intended, you'll end up with a different recipe. Maybe one you even like better. <laughs>